what is up guys and welcome back to another video how are you guys doing i hope you guys are doing great i hope you guys are doing awesome and welcome back to another video and as you guys can see today i'm wearing uh, this uh, neck gator um i wanted to wear this for my intro to the video um, it looks really cool i just got it yesterday um, and i just wanted to share with you guys to see how cool it looks it's really a little bit hard to breathe on this it's kind of a little bit of really tight but as you guys can see today we're going to be doing a reaction video today we're going to be reacting to florida man and it's by the infographics and it's called most crazy florida man stories uh on my previous video when i ended that um donut operator video this uh, florida man video um came up and it looked really interesting and i decided to um, do my next video uh, on it so that's what we're gonna be doing today um, I hope you guys like this video and I hope you guys enjoy it if you guys do please don't forget to hit the like button subscribe to the channel and don't forget to turn on notification bell so you guys don't mess up for any new videos um, and those of you guys that are new to this channel welcome my name is Alex and thank you for checking out my channel and giving my channel a chance I'm really thankful and I hope you guys uh, like my channel and can stay so yeah guys uh, enough of me talking and let's get right into the video and i hope you guys like and enjoy so here we go florida 27th state of the united states with a population of 21.48 million its nickname is the sunshine state but in truth florida is far more popular for the insanity of its inhabitants than for its warm sunlit beaches odds are even if you aren't from the sorry i'm gonna um sorry um i'm gonna take it off a little bit so I can speak correctly because it's really hard to talk with this thing on my face. But yeah, anyways, let's continue. U.S., you've heard your fair share of insane Florida man stories, and we've done our best to round up some of the truly craziest examples of why Florida should maybe be turned into a giant alligator preserve. Florida man doesn't get straw, attacks McDonald's employee. In 2018, most of the world woke up to the humongous waste of plastic that is drinking straws and decided that enough sea turtles had been murdered in their name. Plastic drinking straw bans went into effect across the U.S. with various levels of enforcement. In Florida, the law required individuals to ask for a straw. But when Daniel Taylor went to reach for a straw in the condiment bar, he flew into a rage upon discovering there were none to be had. An employee explained that customers now had to ask for straws, only for Taylor to respond by grabbing the employee by the shirt and dragging her onto the counter. After getting punched in the face, Taylor left the restaurant, only to return later and make his displeasure over the new straw law known by kicking an employee in the stomach. Taylor would go on to get arrested and charged with two counts of battery. Florida man where- <laughs> I mean, Are you serious? You're gonna attack uh, employees over a law that, you know, um, something as sim like something small as a straw i mean i sometimes use straws i sometimes i don't you know but you know you can't get mad at the employees just for following you know the rules the law and all that but and also like he punched a female employee i think that's what he said and <laughs> then coming back to hitting another employee uh yeah man there's f the cop shirt to court wins case in 2014, a Florida man was pulled over by a state trooper and ticketed for a sticker that the trooper claims was obstructing view of the license plate. The man claimed that he was simply being harassed for recording cops forcing people to move their parked cars at a popular pullover spot by Highway 27 for no good reason. The man fought his ticket as he had promised the issuing officer that he'd do, but turned heads when he showed up to court wearing a t-shirt reading F the police, with the entire F word spelled out. Incredibly, the judge ruled in favor of the man, stating that the cops had not met the burden of proof required to ticket the man. Florida man uses private plane to draw giant penis on radar. This next story is pretty self-explanatory. No, so Aviation close. fans checking the website Flight Radar 24, where civilians can track the flight paths of airplanes all over the world, were shocked to discover a pilot in a private plane flying a track that on radar looked like a giant penis. Some speculated that it might have been a giant coincidence, but the track is far too perfectly a penis for it to be anything but purposeful. Florida man charged with assault with deadly weapon after throwing Alex. Oh my goodness, Florida is really awesome. I mean, uh, the crazy people there are freaking hilarious. 
navigator through Wendy's drive through window. Ok, here's another one that's pretty self-explanatory. In 2016, Joshua James found an alligator on the side of the road. Because Florida is basically the Australia of the United States, only less dangerous. Apparently unhappy with his drive through experience at a local Wendy's, James made his displeasure known by throwing the live alligator through the window and into the restaurant. After being arrested, James was charged with Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. That's one way to getting, uh, you know, like getting your revenge on bad customer service. You know, I mean, your displeasure at customer service. Uh, throwing an alligator. Heck, um, I'll, I'll throw a kangaroo if I could ever get one. Get my hands on a kangaroo. I'm just kidding, guys. I would never do that. Aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. The weapon, of course, being the airborne alligator. He also picked up lesser airborne. charges for illegally killing, possessing, or capturing an alligator, as well as second degree larceny, petty theft for the soft drink he didn't pay for. After a court appearance, James was told to limit his contact with animals to his mother's dog, undergo a mental health evaluation, and avoid possessing any weapons, to include other throwable reptiles, we're assuming. <laughs> Floridans warned not to shoot guns at Hurricane Irma. It started as a joke on Facebook, a public event asking people to shoot their guns at Hurricane Irma in order to stop the storm in its tracks. The event drew so much attention from all across the state, however, that authorities felt a desperate need to stop. <laughs> you're gonna fire your bullets on a hurricane just to make it stop? The f what the heck? In and beg people to act sane for a change. The Pasco County Sheriff's Office was forced to tweet the following. To clarify, do not shoot weapons at Irma. You won't make it turn around and it will have very dangerous side effects. We get that the whole thing had become a viral joke, but just how bad is Florida's science education that a sheriff's department felt the need to explain that bullets don't make hurricanes turn around? Florida man <laughs> wears clear plastic bag as disguise to rob GameStop. Okay, this next one proves that even if you don't live in Florida, you're not- And it's really weird, uh, I haven't even heard about these stories. Not safe from Florida man. In 2018, Carrie Hammond crossed the Georgia border and attempted to rob a GameStop. How did he disguise his identity in order to pull off the crime of the century? Hammond decided to throw a plastic water bottle wrapper over his head and call it a day. The best part? He wore it so that his face was looking out through the clear sides of the pack. That's the most laziest uh, mask, you know. Uh, I don't know why he can like, you know, wear a, a, a paper bag or, you know. But I mean, you know, uh, he had a plastic bag nearby him at the moment, so maybe that's why. Packaging, giving security cameras a perfect shot of his face. Needless to say, Hammond was arrested shortly after his theft. Florida man arrested for breaking into jail to hang out with friends. Friends are a great thing. <laughs> we here at Infographics consider all of you our friends. If you get thrown in jail and expect us to miss you bad enough to come break you out, you can forget about it though. Perhaps feeling the spirit of the season, 24-year-old Patrick Rempe just wanted to visit with his friends for the holidays. Forget trying to break them out. Rempe just wanted to hang out. When he was refused entry at the main door, Rempe rammed his car into a repeatedly, and failing that, decided to climb one of the two exterior fences. Upon reaching the top of the fence though, Rempe became entangled. Perhaps feeling the spirit of the season, 24-year-old Patrick Rempe just wanted to visit with his friends for the holidays. Forget trying to break them out. Rempe just wanted to hang out. When he was refused entry at the main door, Rempe rammed his car into it repeatedly and, failing that, decided to climb one of the two exterior fences. Upon reaching the top of the fence, though, Rempe became entangled in the barbed wire, and as officers dragged him down very painfully, we might add, Rempe decided to thank them by getting into a fistfight. Rempe ultimately would get his wish as he was charged with aggravated assault and battery on a law enforcement officer, three counts of felony criminal mischief, leaving the scene of a crash with property damage, and, surprise, surprise, driving under the influence. What influence though? <laughs> well, it turns out Rempe was motivated less by holiday spirit and more by the synthetic and extremely dangerous drug Flocka. Florida man denies drinking while driving, says only drank at stop signs. By now, we've yeah, established that Florida is basically the United States' alcoholic uncle with an undiagnosed mental disorder. At least when America's drunk uncle imbibes, he does so responsibly. After hitting the bumper of the lady in front of him at a McDonald's drive through several times, police pulled over Earl Gustav Stevens on suspicion of drunk driving. 
Police found Stevens marinating in liquor with a bottle of Jim Beam sitting next to him on the passenger seat. As he was being arrested for drunk driving, Stevens protested that he had in fact not been drinking and driving, as he only had drunk his Jim Beam at red lights and stop signs. Despite Stevens' obvious concern yeah. for the letter of the law, as as he was inevitably arrested and charged with a D. Still, as long as you're behind the wheel, it's still a problem, I mean, my bad. Let's go back a little bit, sorry. Driving, as he only had drunk his Jim Beam at red lights and stop signs. Despite Stevens' obvious concern for the letter of the law, he was inevitably arrested and charged with a DUI. Florida man arrested after assaulting girlfriend with cooked chicken. In 2018, 23-year-old Juwan Brown got into a fight with his live-in girlfriend. In the heat of the moment, Brown stepped on his girlfriend's foot on purpose, prompting her to push him away. In retaliation, Brown turned to the only weapon within reach, a piece of cooked chicken. The thrown <laughs> piece of chicken hit the girlfriend on the face, and shortly after, police were called. Brown would be freed on bond in order to have no contact with the defendant. But our favorite part of the story, other than, you know, assault with chicken, is the statement that police released after the incident. We do not have information on the way that the piece of chicken was prepared. Oh, Florida, <laughs> never stop being you. Florida man oh, with yeah. no arms stabs tourist. In 2018, <laughs> Jonathan Crenshaw, a homeless man with no arms known for his artwork that he creates with his feet, was approached by a 22-year-old Caesar Coronado. Details are sketchy, with both Coronado and his girlfriend claiming that upon stopping to ask Crenshaw for directions, Coronado was immediately stabbed with a pair of scissors held in Crenshaw's feet. For his part, Crenshaw denies that he instigated the incident, instead claiming that Coronado had attacked him first. Crenshaw, who has a violent history with police, was later arrested and charged with aggravated battery. Florida man arrested for practicing karate on swans. At 9.30 a.m. on April 26, 2018, Rocco Joseph Montea was spotted by witnesses engaging in an early morning workout. As an avid karate fan, Montea began his morning workout routine by chasing swans and then kicking them in the face. A witness would claim that he spotted Montea practicing karate by kicking one swan in the head and then another on the butt. It seems that when he ran out of swans to spar with, Montea turned his attention onto a sleeping duck, which ah, he also karate duck. kicked. Police were promptly called and perhaps most surprisingly of all, Montea was arrested and found to not be under the influence of any drugs, though he was charged with cruelty to animals. Florida man attacks homeless man, tries to eat his face. It was the zombie-like attack that kicked off the bath salts global scare. And where else would it have happened but Florida? No, seriously, this is the only place where this level of insanity could have possibly manifested and warned the world of a new drug craze that threatened to turn its users into cannibal zombies. On the morning of May 26, 2012, 31-year-old Rudy Eugene was driving into Miami Beach for the Urban Beach Week Festival when his car broke down. After spending half an hour by his disabled vehicle, Eugene ditched the car and walked along the highway on foot. Apparently high on numerous unidentified substances, the only positive identification being marijuana, Eugene began to remove his clothing as he walked, eventually ending up naked, save for his shoes and a Bible. The Bible and shoes, however, would quickly be discarded, and shortly afterwards Eugene ran into a 65-year-old homeless man named Ronald Popo. According to Popo, Eugene was friendly at first knowing Popo from the work that he had done with the homeless community earlier that year. However, the now naked Eugene suddenly accused Popo of having stolen his Bible and launched a vicious attack against him. In the course of the attack, Eugene would tear off Popo's pants and then proceed to gouge out his eyes and bite off 75-80% to 80 of Popo's face. Upon being warned by police to stop his attack, Eugene simply growled at the responding officer and began to bite at Popo again, continuing his attack even after being shot. Eventually, after being shot four more times, the police were able to pull Eugene off the mangled Popo. A toxicology report revealed that very little other than marijuana was in Eugene's system, though a prominent toxicologist warned that the test administered wasn't looking for very many potential drugs that Eugene could have been imbibing. With the zombie-like psychotic behavior reminiscent of individuals high on bath salts, it's thought that this may have been behind Eugene's psychotic break and subsequent cannibal attack. Either way, if it was going to happen anywhere, it was definitely going to be in Florida. And there you have it, a definite list of all the reasons that Florida is America's mentally deranged alcoholic uncle. Super fun to hear <laughs> stories about, but an absolute nightmare at a family gathering and presidential elections. Now watch Insane uh, Ways Florida. People Have Faked Their Own Death or check out this other video instead. Oh man, that was, that was hilarious. Uh, the floor man, uh, 
these Florida man videos are really funny. Um, the other two, um, the other two uh, at the end of the video, uh, like how they fake their own deaths and all that. I'm thinking I'm gonna do a video on it too. The next after this one, or uh, after a gaming video. I'm not sure if it's gonna be a gaming video or it's gonna be another reaction video. But yeah, um, it seems interesting how people fake their own death. But anyways, yeah, uh, Florida man is really hilarious. I was in Florida for a few days uh, working. I think it was just two weeks, but not long enough to see something crazy. But like I said, hopefully if I ever move to Florida, I'm gonna try to stay away from customer service or anything that has to deal with people. But yeah, guys, um, I hope you guys liked this video and I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys did, please don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to turn on the notification bell so you guys don't miss a friend in your videos. So yeah guys, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Good afternoon or whatever time of the day you're watching. Have a great day and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care and bye.